Hello, everybody. Welcome to Freddie Cooks International. And today we are back with a shrimp boil, baby. Thank you for joining me. I'm sure you're going to enjoy today's video. At least I hope so. You should stay tuned because today we're going to have a nice little session of hard truths and tough love. So I'm not going to talk too much. We're going to get right in. I've got some B-Love sauce over here. I guess nowadays you can't have seafood without the B-Love sauce. So I got it right here. So let me tell you what I've got. Got some corn, got some potato, got some egg, got a little broccoli, got some shrimp, got some, did I say sausage? Okay, great. Where should I start? What should I, ooh, where, what to do first? Okay, corn maybe. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, actually, I'm going to be a little bougie here because that's hot. I didn't taste my B-Love sauce before I poured it in here. I just put everything in here together. I've made it. I've made this sauce so many times. I don't even feel like I have to taste it. I haven't even bought, shame on me, I have not even bought her dry mix yet. But because she's taught us how to make it, so I'm spoiled. I make it and it's good every single time. Let's see what we got this time. Mm, actually, I use this. Look at that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mm. Mm. This stuff make you eat your hand off. Oh, God. That piece of corn ain't have a chance. I want to go for the other piece of corn now, but dang, I don't got but one more. Let's go with small potato. Mm hmm. Uh, my sauce tastes different every single time, but every single time is delicious. Oh my gosh. Mm. So good. Huh? Okay, the food has got me quiet already. I don't want to be quiet in this video. I want to talk to you. Actually, we are going to talk. We're going to have some good conversation here. If you stay with me, I want to eat a little bit first. 
So we're going to finish our, not finish, we're going to continue our session from the last time, one of the last times, about temporary versus, versus eternal things. A temporal versus eternal. Oh my gosh. Got to get me some crab legs in here soon. This is crazy. How good this is. I don't know what my chin is doing. I hadn't even looked up. Nothing new here. Got my same blackberry lemonade. Which is amazing. As always. Oh, excuse me. This is crazy. Crazy good.
Okay, give me a minute. We're going to talk, I promise. Give me a minute. Mm. Oh my God. Okay. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Okay? And I'm here to help you. Last time we just we talked about things eternal versus things that are temporary. And we use examples of physical things that you can see in this world, which are eternal which are temporary things, everything that you can see in this entire world that has a physical, that that's mass, that takes up space, is temporary because it can be destroyed. And we discuss the eternal, things that cannot be destroyed. <coughs> Excuse me. And examples of those things was just two of the things, uh, love and peace. Now, somebody out there may be tempted to say that love can be destroyed and peace can be destroyed. I want us to take a deeper look at those two. While there are some other things that are eternal that cannot be destroyed, we'll talk about that later on in life. But for today, we're just going to go with the two that I've already introduced. <coughs> Love and peace. It's very important to know these two items are very valuable and anything that is eternal and as valuable as these two also has a counterfeit, something that's fake, something that Attempts to look like it, something that looks, appear to be love, appear to be peace, but it's a counterfeit. It's fake. It doesn't, it's not as valuable. And that's where we're going to get to the types of love that there is. Because if true love, True love, we're talking about real love. We think we're talking about the real stuff now. Someone who you've truly loved, someone who has made you feel love, you have to think, I don't know, if you have a parent, have someone who you love unconditionally. Once, if when that person dies, you never will forget how they made you feel, if the love was real, if it was true, if it was unconditional. Somebody may be tempted to say, well, love can be destroyed. And that's when we have to stop and contemplate is it real love that can be destroyed? 
or was what you once thought was love really wasn't love at all. Now, if we look at marriages today and how many divorces that there are for so many reasons, people jump in relationships so quickly now on the premise that they love that person. But it's so very easy to get out of love so quickly. And I'd like to suggest that the things that we're calling love is not really love. It's a counterfeit. And so it blinds us to the truth. The counterfeits are blinding. It's deceiving. And so it could be lust. You really like them for their body. I'm just saying. It happens. Or Many people fall in love with the idea of being in love and never really stand the test of time or the relationships. Because when people take vows, many of the times the vows, the wedding vows are saying, to death do us part. And you say, I promise to love and cherish you and hold you through sickness and health. And some people... It don't even take that much for them to be looking for somebody else. Now, I know all types of things happen in relationships that make the relationships go sour. But love itself is long-suffering. Long-suffering means that it endures. And so if you have a quote-unquote love that cannot endure hardship. What you have is a counterfeit. If your love is dependent on anything in return. Then what you have is a counterfeit. Because true love needs nothing in return. It may sound hard. But that's the point. The things that are eternal is not easily gained. And nowadays, we want everything to come easy. That where there is no work and where there's any, come, any hardship, I don't have to deal with it. I don't have to take it. I'm out. Or whatever. So when it comes to peace... I suggested before that peace is not always the absence of war or conflict, but it's being able to endure through hardship and have a peace of mind of knowing that everything is going to be okay eventually. Even though hell is all, all hell is breaking out at the moment. So it's being able to see beyond What's really happening? I mean, it's not blinding yourself to the truth, but it's really being able to be long-suffering. Long-suffering meaning enduring, not phased and easily bothered at conflict. It's really patience, having patience. And I know many of you may have heard patience is a virtue. Which is another thing that is eternal. But I don't want to introduce that yet. We'll, we'll go back. Now that we have to talked about the counterfeits of the thing is eternal. Let's talk about opposites.
Mm. Well, actually, before we talk about opposites, opposites, let's talk about the different types of love because there is actually more than one type of love. Many people say love is love. But you have a brotherly love, brotherly love, which is love for your neighbors. Neighbors meaning your the person next to you, the people that you walk by every day. Your physical neighbors that live next to you, your your brothers and sisters, which really it's just everybody and it may be hard for a lot of us to love people that we just met and so that takes a different type of love that's brotherly love loving your neighbor as yourself so that you treat people the way you would like to be treated that's brotherly love right that keeps us from hurting people or wanting to hurt people that keeps us self-aware so that when we do say something or do something to hurt somebody else, we can easily apologize because that wasn't our intent. However, our, when our love is tested, when people do things to us that make us mad, a lot of times we want to retaliate and... <clears throat> And return to them the hurt that they have returned to us. Now, it takes a different level of love to not retaliate. That's a level that you, we have to seek. Many people don't want to even get to that level. But that's a, that's a love out, out of this world. That's a love beyond the temporal, okay? Go with me here. So that's brotherly love. Loving your neighbor as yourself. There is agape love, which is a godly love. The love that you love God. That's a love beyond brotherly love. But how can you love God if you don't know God? That you have not seen. What I'm suggesting to you is it has to be a relationship. Uh. How can you have a relationship with someone that you don't know? Do you hear what I'm saying? Let me ask you that again. How do you truly have a relationship with someone that you do not know? Now let's take it back a step back a little bit. There are many people who engage in relationships, who desire to be in relationships with us with someone, desire to marry someone. But they haven't even spent enough time to date that person, to get to know that person, to know who they're truly, who they truly are. Many of you know, and I know many of you can relate. People are always them, their best selves at the beginning of your relationships. When you first meet somebody that you really like, you try to put on your best face. It's like putting on makeup. Mm. Even that's an example. Hmm. Why do people put on makeup? Some people may suggest to enhance the beauty that they already have. That's nice. Some people may suggest. People who are realist. To hide the flaws. But depending on. How. 
how real you can be with yourself depends on how you answer that question. A person who don't want to see their own flaws would never say to hide my flaws. It was just it would be just to enhance my beauty. But I know a part of enhancing your beauty is using concealer to cover up wrinkles, using concealer or makeup or foundation or whatever to cover up discoloration. even acne. So, I suggest that people fall in relationships with a person who has makeup on, basically. So they never really see the true person until it's too late sometimes. And so, basically, you've gotten into a relationship with this person. A relationship now should be give and take in communication being able to be real with that person, being able to be honest with that person, being able to share the truth. But you fall in love with somebody that you haven't even seen their real face. And people take that lightly, but we wonder why certain things don't work out. But we try to go into relationships without really knowing that other person without dating that person, without spending time with that person to get to know who they really are. And so you can't truly fall in love with somebody that you don't know. I mean, fall in love with someone. Now we're talking about not sister and brother love. This is beyond sister and brother love. This is a love for your spouse, a love for you know, someone you're going to spend the rest of your life with. All right. So it's a little perverted to love your sister and brother with that type of love. Some people are into that, but most people have a conscience to know that you don't date your relatives. That can be controversial, but we're not going to get into that right now. I'm just saying, when it comes to a relationship, when it comes to love, we have to spend time. So people, I'm suggesting here, people don't know God because we don't spend time to get to know, to get to search, to get to see who is he or is he really. But if we dismiss that, we will never get to find that relationship. Okay. Um. So I'm suggesting to you today, because actually this is 30 minutes now and I'm running out of space when it comes to spending, when it comes to finding relationships, when it comes to building relationships with just with the person that you're meeting every day. We're so busy with our own lives and our own agendas that we don't take enough time with the people that we see every day, even on our jobs. We spend so much time on our cell phones, distracted. And so we never really get, we're, we're at a point now in these days where we never really get to relationship. Everything is on a text, everything is on the computer. Nothing's really personal anymore. We need to start spending some time. Because love is something that has to grow. Just like a plant. When you plant it in the ground, you water it, give it sunlight, it needs nurturing. It has to start as a seed, of course, and it has to grow. You can't rush it. There's I mean you I mean nowadays you can I guess there's miracle grow, but there's only so much growing that you can force a plant to do. And There's no rushing it. So what I'm saying is, 
the things that are most valuable to us, especially the, the things that are eternal, that are very valuable, takes time. It takes nurturing and it takes some endurance to work through, some patience. And so everything is not overnight. Love doesn't happen overnight, even though we want to marry. I mean, you if you're in high school, you think you're going to marry your high school sweetheart. But true chances are, even statistics, how many people really marry their high school sweethearts? It happens. But when you're in high school, you think that's the love of your life. I'm just saying, take some time to spend some time to get to know people. It's going to cost you a lot less headaches in the end, and it's going to be more valuable to you in the end. If you take some time to get to know people, take some time to even get to know yourself. Well, my friends, that is it for today. Um, I don't want to feel like I'm coming off preaching. I just want to share some things that surprisingly many people don't really take time to think about. And everything that's worth having is actually worth spending some time to gain. Okay? That's it for now. Um, I really was intending to eat all of this before I started talking. That's why I wanted to start eating more before I start talking because now I've talked the video through and I haven't eaten my food. But it was delicious. And I'm actually happy because I get to have some leftovers. All right, I hope you enjoyed this session today. There will be more. If you loved it, give me a comment up. If you didn't, okay, it's okay. Uh, I'm going to talk and I'm going to share this anyway because I can and because I want to. So uh, thank you to everybody who are still here. I love you for watching Freddie Cooks International Soul Food, more than food for your soul.